the, the talk now, and then some general questions round, and then a workshop on the same topic sure, yeah. as the talk. Yeah, this is a fairly technical talk, like I didn't exactly know the target audience, but I assume if there's anywhere that there's uh, Ethereum developers, I uh, would understand this, it would be here. So, here we go. Um, so, my name is Nikolai, I'm the CEO of Nexus Development. We're a small uh, R&D shop, I guess, for uh, uh, Ethereum-based applications, or more generally, decentralized applications in the Web3 space and all this sort of stuff. Um, so, let me give you some background. Um, we actually, even before Nexus was formed, basically the, the team was still working together and we were working on multiple uh, smart contract projects that all interacted with each other. This was the common theme is that there's interconnectedness. And we were not satisfied with the existing tooling. Uh, to, uh, the, you know, I guess it was at the time uh, Embark and Truffle uh, and one other one, uh, Populous, were a real one. The thing that, um, those, none of those had our needs because um, Basically, no one else had made the transition to thinking about uh, dApps as systems of contracts instead of uh, individual contracts. You'll see uh, now, actually, in, in some of their documentation, they explicitly say like this: the, the model we're using is that there is a, a single contract, or maybe they go as far as a, a contract type that gets deployed by a factory, and there's a singleton factory, um, or, or not. That's basically the extent of the, of the complexity that comes from interconnectedness um, in those other systems. So um, that wasn't good enough for us, basically. And so uh, we sort of got, got so slow because of this complexity that we decided to take like a detour and work on our tool chain and work on our frameworks um, to be able to basically grow the types of systems that you saw on the first slide uh, more quickly and easily and safely and all this sort of thing. Um, so the current status, why I'm here, uh, the architecture that's are paying off. Um, the, we have several smart contract systems uh, on the testnet that are successfully integrated together and we are able to um, basically, uh, there's a whole, like, I'll get into it later, but there's a whole lot of challenges, uh, new types of challenges that are emerging. You have to do integration testing against other people's contract systems and we're able to do that now. And the theme now, um, if before it was uh, like investment in our own tools and like priming, then we're finally at the stage where it, we're accelerating and it's working. Like the, again, the bets are paying off, the, the bets into these, uh, uh, architecting these systems in a way so that they can be uh, interconnected with like a focus on the, the package uh, data definition. Um, and so uh, you, you should see a lot more of that soon. And um, what we're now announcing for the public is what we're going to call our DEF suite, our Solidity Developer Suite, um, which includes our build, test, and deploy tool called DAPL. It includes a contract system framework, this is Solidity code, uh, called DAPSYS. And we have a service, which is basically a package registry uh, on steroids uh, for the pa uh, DAPL format of packages, uh, which is also, it's the actual thing is like an on-chain registry, um, but it also has a web service that people can use to explore um, the packages. So, by the way, everyone should do this. If you have a project, run these three commands, install Dapple, and run Dapple in it, in your project, and then forget about it. Um, so yeah, what, what is, the, what is the, the function of Dapple? It does three things. Well, it does one thing well. well the thing it does well is careful attention to um, the package model, basically. Um, but what you use it for is it's like a multi-tool um, for building and testing, uh, for dependency management, package management, and for deployment scripting. And uh, these three things are, are, are related to each other in a way that's very unique to Ethereum or to the smart contract ecosystem. And it's because everyone shares a runtime environment, right? They all deploy to the same chain, or there's maybe a small number of chains like Morgan and, uh, and Ethereum mainnet or something like this, maybe another popular one someday. Um, so because of this, addresses, it's, 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 you have this weird uh, thing where there's a blurred line between uh, a code package and a, a descriptor of an app application. So for example, many um, pure, uh, many Solidity packages that are pure code, they still have, for example, factory contracts so that you don't have to redeploy from scratch, you can just make a function call and the other contract will deploy, which is cheaper. Um, and then there's stuff in between, like maybe you have a token and so you will publish a uh, package which is a code package, but you still have the, the object reference for each chain on which your contract system is deployed. 
uh, which is very different from the traditional uh, how traditional factor managers approach the problem. It would be similar to if uh, the node uh, NPM infrastructure on their on their package explorer you could see every single web server that was running exactly that uh, code that was in the uh, the node package and it was like provable and you were you had complete certainty that this is exactly the code that was running on that server. Which obviously you can you don't have that property of any other language except for Solidity. Um, so it required invent, thinking about these things in a new way. Yeah, so I'm not going to talk about um, building and testing because that's basically exactly the same as in any other ecosystem and, and the hard details are really boring. Um, but I will talk about deployment scripting. So um, one of the main things that oh, was unsatisfying about the other tools is that is it's clear they had not basically been used to create um, like non-trivial applications because there was no, all their notions of deployments at best um, had like a dependency graph where you deploy one contract and then the next one you deploy uh, depended on addresses of previous ones you deployed. But a lot of systems, you, if that's not enough, you need to deploy some contracts, make some transactions to modify their state, deploy some more contracts, wire them up, deploy more contracts, do some more <coughs> transactions. So it's not, um, it's not as easy as putting it in a factory or putting it uh, in a single uh, deployer contract, and sometimes not even possible. Like if the gas, if it costs too much gas, you have to uh, split it up. Um, so what we have is we've created a domain-specific language. It's similar to Solidity. Um, it's a little bit, it's more restricted, and um, it, but it has totally different semantics because it's not a the target is not a contract. It's not EVM bytecode that you deploy. The um, what happens, instead what happens is that will interprets the script. And it actually creates transactions for each of these statements. So this is, you can see how this might is like a valid. This could be like, oh, um, well, each of these could be solidity statements, but they also could be interpreted as um, like a, new, a distinct transaction that you have to make. And all the restrictions in this language that are different from solidity are specifically they specifically have to do with the fact that you're actually creating distinct transactions with each statement. Um, and I won't go into what this does, but maybe we can revisit this uh, at the end if. You guys want basically um, it's show uh, setting up a multi-contract system uh, with authorization, but I'm just going to skip to this um, because this is this is an unimplemented feature, but I just thought it was so cool that I wanted to talk uh, to everyone about it. At the pre on that on that in that script, you might have read an assert statement, which makes no sense if these are distinct transactions. I mean, sure you can assert and halt the script and not keep going, but you might have already butchered your state, right? If you if you've gotten that far and the assert fails, something went wrong. So one of the like one of these previous transactions did something bad, and now you can't unroll it. Um, but the really interesting thing to do is, with this language, can be instead compiled into something that is fed to an interpreter contract, which can do the entire sequence. They can try to do it atomically, and if one of those things fails, they can throw another report the entire transaction. So uh, basically, deploy um, sequences that are more general are, are general enough that you can either uh, you can basically choose oh these things must be atomic, and for example, you sometimes need to do that for safety, or you can choose both these things um, can, may be split up, non-atomic, and you do that um, for to get on the gas limit. That's the really the main um, reason you would ever do that. Um, so this is a convenient segue into the next thing, which is our Solidity framework called DASIS. I think the closest thing that exists at all uh, is basically the owner-owned pattern. So you say, uh, level law contract is owned. That means the creator uh, gets uh, is recorded, and then you can mark functions as only the, only the owner is able to call that function, and then the owner can also transfer ownership of the contract. So it's a very basic access control uh, mechanism, and DAPSIS basically takes that to uh, an extreme where we have an entire access control uh, system pattern. Uh, we have ways of doing dynamic contracts where you change the implementation. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to get too far into this for fear of like to, uh, it being too abstract nonsense. Uh, but the point is that um, when we move from thinking about individual contracts to systems of contracts, um, you like for basically you have to like there's parallels for each concept that most people are used to. So people say uh, contracts are immutable. Um, but contract systems can be selectively immutable. They can lock down certain behaviors, but then they can uh, make these behaviors. Uh, like administrators, the administrators can come in and improve them, or fix, fix bugs, or something like this. Um, and I think I think that uh, people people will think less of, of these things as like a permanent thing you deploy, and more like 
like a traditional system that is continuously administered and up upgraded, but the administrators have tools to lock themselves out, basically. <coughs> so yeah, and that's what this uh, uh, system framework lets you do, and you can use it to install it via Dapple, and you know, it doesn't fancy with Dapple, and all that stuff, and that's ready right now, also. And the, f the final piece of this puzzle is Dapp Hub, which is an um, on-chain package registry for Dapple packages. Um, with the actual data layer is IPFS, which is pretty fun. Um, and it comes with a web service uh, just to explore the, the code. But the critical thing is that um, because there's so much metadata about, about actual objects in, the, uh, in, the, you know, in our package system, Adapo is also able to be a very powerful block explorer. Like, um, because, for example, on Etherscan, you can go and you see like, uh, the storage and the code and whatever. And maybe they'll even let you eventually like, just have auto UI where you send it the raw call data, but they don't have all the metadata about what the addresses are. And not just, and, and even, if, even for the services where you're allowed to submit your code so that they can compile it and verify it, that gives them some metadata, but that doesn't give them like a big picture view of, a, of an entire constellation of contracts because they weren't, they weren't uh, set up in a way that is like machine readable. Basically, the history of the system is, is, is not uh, in, a, in a format that's easy to, to parse, basically. <coughs> um, and so this is also kind of available. There's a, there's a beta in <coughs> publishing your package requires uh, Nexus uh, admin keys. Um, but again, just like everything that Hub is built to be a dynamic, upgradable system, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, the data layer will be preserved when we upgrade it to be able to, to make it so that any individual can uh, submit their package. Um, and then we can do that without disrupt, without having to redeploy and re-publish uh, every package. Um, and then also, like I guess I should mention, if someone, anyone that's if proactive enough will put their package in here and, and sign it. It's not like we're trying to lock people out. It's that if we haven't invented a, uh, a naming system that we're satisfied with, basically. And so, um, that is all I had. I just want to introduce you to those three uh, products. Hopefully, you all go and research them after this. I'm happy to answer questions. And also, I don't know if you want to do like a workshop type thing. Maybe some people can like go in half the room if they're interested. Uh, we can, and and I'll, I can like help people. And we have other Nexus developers here who can also uh, walk you through it. Um, so, yeah, any questions? Then uh, maybe in five or ten minutes. Okay, question. Uh, one question. Uh, do you run your environment on a, on a private blockchain or on the test blockchain or on the real one? The, with the environment. No. Um, so well, what you can, yeah. So you actually can do all of them. That's, okay. the, that's the point. Yeah, you can. Uh, so the deploy script, for example, when we run a deploy script, first it runs a simulated version in the local EVM to make sure there's no mistakes. Then it deploys to whichever environment you specify mm -hmm. that you want to run to, and Apple does have a it does a, a fairly intelligent like it can detect when you're on the wrong wrong environment theoretically right so like if you if you are about to run a deploy sequence but then it says hey you're you're a, you think this is more than but actually you're deploying to Ethereum like and it can stop you doing stuff like that. Is it open source? Yes, uh, da Dapple and Dapsys are both open uh, <coughs> license. Dapp Hub is the contract, you know, the on-chain registry obviously is an IPFS that's like super transparent and, uh, and everything is visible, uh, but the web service is closed source. So. Mm -hmm. What is your uh, business case? How do you uh, So Nexus actually get very funny through uh, contracting work. Everyone, all the, all the developers working for Nexus already had mm -hmm. clients and, uh, before we started, so we just basically banded together to have a brand mm -hmm. and to have to be able to take on bigger, bigger projects. So one of the slides at the beginning, you said just run these three commands and you can install it. Uh -huh. what, what do they do more? Um, that, yeah, yeah. So um, that basically gets, gets you Dapple, and then you go into your project with Dapple, and it uh, sets it up just like NPM in it or whatever else. And then, yeah, you have, uh, I don't know, like build, test, uh, publish, install, those, those sort of things, like with the package manager. And then you have like the DSL stuff, like a run. No, it's a wrapper around Solidity compiler. Well, except for the deploy script, the DSL, in some cases, is a substitute for Solidity. So, as editor, I use Solidity and the framework and the role, yeah? What? Uh, for editing, uh, for editing, I, I think use yes. uh, 
Yeah, it is not related to this. Yeah, yes, okay. For searching for library code when deploying libraries? Searching for library code? We actually, um, you mean like the, the Solidity uh, key library, like the keyword? We did not support that at all um, because it used to not use delegate call, it used to use call code, which was like basically made up. It changed. Yeah, it changed. Uh, so last that, that's very recent. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, look at, we'll look at it again. It's definitely, I mean, it's worth supporting, but we just. Because I think it's really useful to have, so when you have an automatic deploy script, mm -hmm. You should search the blockchain whether the code is already there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if, if <coughs> you don't need it, then you don't need it. You just compile the library once and just search for exactly this code yeah. and then you don't have to check anything because. That's a good idea, yeah. Code. We've definitely polluted the chain a little bit, so that would be <laughs> probably good. Uh,